So, a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. Um, it was, a, a lot of people wondering uh, why at 58 years old, I still play in the garden. I still uh, raise butterflies. I have caterpillars in cages and I release butterflies back into the wild. And uh, why, where the heck I got all that? So, I kinda wanna explain a couple of things is uh, when I was pretty young in the 70s, uh, I come home one day and my dad uh, took me to the side of the house and he showed me, he built this cage. And it was about a five, by, uh, five foot tall by about a three by three, three deep and about three wide uh, cage he had built. And he had used um, kind of the, uh, the screen for a screen door. It had a removable lid and a removable front. And he said, uh, this came in the mail for you. And he had signed me up for this new study in the 70s from the University of Toronto. And uh, some guy, some doctor, was trying to figure out where all the monarchs went uh, east of the Rockies. Right, Jerry's? Are you listening? Okay. You're not listening? <laughs> and uh, most of us knew where the, um, in, on the west coast where all the butterflies went. Uh, they went to Monterey, they went to uh, eucalyptus trees. When I was a kid, my dad would take me down uh, to the, uh, down to Monterey. You see the thousands of uh, monarchs that uh, spent the winter in the um, eucalyptus trees. So we all knew where that was, but this was a new study. No one knew where all the others went. So uh, what it was, was a, uh, it was kind of a, uh, a little, bunch of little tags and a list. And what you would do is you would uh, r slightly rub the scales off the wings of the a butterfly, just a little bit, and you would put this tag on there. And uh, you would write it down and you'd list the tag and the, the, the butterfly would go away. And if it ever got caught, you could record this number on its location. Well, this was, um, this was uh, what we did for years uh, as a kid. Um, my uh, folks, uh, they uh, drank Folgers coffee and nothing better than a Folgers coffee can uh, to go catch creatures because you could perforate the lids and uh, you could go get uh, the caterpillars. And me and my friend, we would go on our bikes and we would fill, uh, go along the uh, railroad tracks in the Bay Area uh, because the railroad tracks for some reason was where everything grew milkweeds because uh, what appeared to me was the seed would be carried by the trains. I don't know they would, so all along the railroad tracks would be milkweed. And back in the 70s, uh, there, these, the milkweed, you would fill coffee cans of, milk, of uh, monarch caterpillars. And we would bring them back, put them in the cages, feed them, and release them. And we would all so collect anise swallowtails uh, from the, uh, uh, the fennel that grew out there. And uh, down the street was an elm tree that uh, we would get, there were so many morning cloaks uh, eating that elm tree uh, when they uh, went to cocoon. It looked like Christmas lights along the eaves of the house. We collected those and uh, to a lot of people's astonishment on the birch trees, they were loaded with these great big polyphemus uh, caterpillars. So we collected all those plus many more. We started uh, growing plants for gulf fritillaries, uh, all kinds of swallowtails and uh, that got me started. So years later, I can't remember when. I don't remember when they figured out where the monarchs uh, uh, were discovered, but that uh, study is what allowed uh, people to find out where the monarchs went in Mexico. And uh, so I have been butterfly gardening ever since. And a few years ago, I went down to Key West, or I believe it was the Key West uh, butterfly uh, farm down there. And I believe that was uh, created by the person who uh, uh, started the monarch study. So I have been butterfly gardening uh, for decades. Uh, no study, no schooling, uh, just testing here and there. And now I have my trusty companion jersey to help me. Right, girl? And as you can see behind me are, uh, is the front butterfly garden. And uh, we are going to kind of walk through that, uh, show you what we're doing all now. Uh, but unfortunately, 
this year there are no butterflies there's no butterflies of any kind i'm not quite sure what happened in 22 years of living in new jersey this is the worst year for butterflies so far um, but uh, hopefully it's not over this summer heat is just starting we're about to have a six day 90 degree heat wave they say it's going to be the hottest since uh, in the longest streak of 90 above degree days here in new jersey since 1911. i don't know what happened in 1911 that made it so hot but uh uh, it's gonna be a hot one. So hopefully that'll bring out the butterflies But uh, I kind of want to share with you some of the uh, plants we've planted here and hopefully uh, this will inspire you guys to um, plant your own uh, because uh, I'm just like a little kid. I am always planting plants, collecting butter, uh, collecting caterpillars, collecting eggs, and planting more plants to attract more butterflies. So let me show you what we've done. And at the end, I'm gonna show you what we found yesterday right at our front door. So you've seen this plant on a couple more, a couple of our videos. This is the wild uh, native swamp milkweed. We obtained this, so we rescued um, a couple plants locally from a construction site in Ridge uh, Ringwood, across the hill here, and uh, we have since then it obviously survived very well, and we have the seed, and we're spreading it throughout the garden this is in the front garden this thing is standing about four feet tall um, the are they are in full sun there's no swamp about this this is in a regular perennial garden you can see down here uh, it has the traditional mass of aphids all over it followed by the pursuing ladybugs but this is a great plant. You can kind of see the really cool color combination. The, uh, I guess it's a mauve, but just the kind of construction of the flower is kind of cool. Unfortunately, in the years past, when I did this, would have to do this, there would be bees and wasps and butterflies all over these flowers. It is a little after, so a little after six and there is nothing. Uh, which is unfortunate but you know everything's in cycles so hopefully next year will be great um, over here some of this stuff is not uh, yet in bloom um, because we, it's about a month behind so that might be another reason for the lack of butterflies because we had a really odd winter um, this is agastache i think i'm seeing that saying that right and this type of anise hyssop this if you could smell this it kind of smells like licorice mint it is not yet in bloom, but it's going to get a little purple flower about so big. Butterflies love it. And the bonus for this is, oh, see these little, I hate these little beetles. These beetles are very destructive. We'll take care of that. Um, the flowers, actually, you can see a flower starting here. These flowers actually are great for pollinators, but they also provide a lot of seed. We have waves of goldfinches visit here uh, when these things seed. Over down below here, right next to everything, you'll see cone flowers. Again, see the beetles. Little, I think these are flea beetles. These are terrible. They eat all the flowers, ruin the look, and we pick them off by hand. They'll eat the, the flower here. So these are you can't. There's not not many uh, plants that are better than uh, the native cone flower. Uh, is attracting uh, pretty much every species of butterfly that uh, thrives on nectar. Uh, the, this is Laetris, a uh, gay flower. And again, this should have been already blooming, but it's not. Another great prairie native, does fantastic here. Um, these are some, I think this sweet cone flower. Uh, this is a uh, Redbeckia down in here forget what kind but as you can see here comes one of the cone flowers these are over the next week or two will be in full bloom uh, this is Budleia kind of controversial this particular is an old variety and this can be very invasive this is Budleia Davidii this will seed and get loose in the wild so what we suggest if you do have this that once it's done flowering you cut the uh, flowers off so you don't get seeds uh, there are plenty of new varieties that are sterile 
So the whole thing about not planting butterfly bush is kind of a moot point after that because plenty of them do not produce seeds. But this old variety, I think this is Black Knight, definitely can be invasive. Uh, down here, this is butterfly weed, Asclepsius tuberosa, another East Coast native. And you can see we've had some deer damage, but it'll rebloom. Another great perennial, this other milkweed. Again, a food source of the monarch. Again, very rare to see there are no bees. There's nothing. Very unusual. And no, we do not use insecticides. As you can see here, this is a large mass of Laetris. Various plants in here, I won't go over them. Um, we also have some phlox in here. This is a sedum. Uh, we plant this because our gardens are designed to have flowers all year long. This is a late bloomer in the fall. Uh, as the monarchs are migrating south, or painted ladies, or uh, admirals are heading away, and this has a, a flower on them that attracts. Uh, so this is a good addition to your uh, garden. Always plan on spring to fall blooms if you want to attract the most butterflies. <laughs> and as you can see, there's just so many butterflies here, but unfortunately, all this isn't attracting anything. Um, flocks here, you got some deer damage. Um, more Rudbeckias and Coreopsis. Uh, this is Menarda. Uh, you can't really find a better variety. Didyama, uh, Monarda didyama than this. Uh, it is a hummingbird magnet. Grows great, easy to grow. As you can see, we're a registered uh, North American Butterfly Association gar uh, butterfly garden, and in that, we're part of the National Wildlife Habitat. Uh, come over here, you see some more sweet cone flowers. Uh, here, this will all be in bloom. Uh, more, quite a few, another terrible little beetle here, kill it, more cone flowers around the back, and this is our common milkweed, if you're standing right here you're going to smell the f sweet fragrance, we do have some bees here, so that is a good sign, some bumblebees, we got some honeybees, what we're really seeing this year is a huge huge decline in native bees. Uh, normally we have uh, a lot of beetles here, um, some really cool native bees, some are orange, some are bright green, uh, and a lot of wasps. Um, there is nothing, so that's a little concerning. It might be because of the amount of pesticides used throughout the darn neighborhood, but that never stopped them before. But uh, this is planted among Baptista, false indigo. It's a uh, host plant for a number of smaller um, butterflies. So that is just one little section, and I'll peel back. That is just one little section of the front butterfly garden. And when I first bought the house, there was nothing here except for that, that, and that was it. Everything else was either they had put in a new septic tank so there was no lawn. There was a backhoe sitting here and there was no plants. Uh oh, and this, uh, this here was here. We planted and put in all of these beds, that spice bush, all of these beds, all of those beds, and of course here. And they're all designed to attract butterflies. Um, while these are butterfly gardens, this is just kind of a repeat of what's up front. But uh, let me show you over here on the other side. This used to be a big uh, Japanese maple. I think you've seen that in a couple of our other videos. But this literally was a dead spot. There was nothing here three, year, three years ago. This is the fourth year. This is all seedlings that we grew. And in fact, the purple milkweed with seeds three years ago. We had three plants come up from seeds. Uh, you can see here, there we actually have some honeybees. The purple milkweed is definitely one of the favorites. But from those three seeds we got, I mean from those three plants, we got 
all of these that are now located throughout the butterfly garden. And from these last, from those, we had a little more yes last year. From all those, we got about 1,000 seeds. From those 1,000 seeds, we got about half of those actually came up in our seed beds and we are transplanting them all around the yard so we have massive purple milkweed beds and we're going to hopefully provide seeds because this is actually not a believe it or not this is a hard to get milkweed and people sell out of seeds well we hope to have this fall a lot of seed available because we've already planted all the plants we need for the property and everything after that we're going to either put back into the wild or provide to somebody who would like to spend a few dollars to buy a few but uh, as you can see there's there are actually bees all over this milkweed but again let's go over some of this butterfly garden this is salvia here this is salvia glutinosa jupiter's distaff has a uh, pale yellow flower hummingbirds love it uh, before that we have some flag iris and this is just really kind of for the architectural look instead of grass we put iris in here to get a long leaf uh, we've got uh, this is always in full bloom this is geraniums uh, this is uh, monarda coming in here this is the native monarda uh, again more sweet uh, sweet uh, uh, I'm saying this wrong sweet cone flower it's a yellow um, more agastache and then here we have a bed of blue mist flower another late bloomer for the late arriving or the, the, the departing butterflies that are migrating south um, that is a great addition to the uh, butterfly garden and it looks like we've had some deer in here actually eating the flowers uh, more flocks. These are white daisies, uh, Shasta daisies. Uh, some more swamp milkweed. You can see these over here haven't bloomed because they get more shade. This is a pink bud layer. Uh, again, more Monarda. And all down through here is just a repeat. Uh, there's some Japanese anemones. That's a good pollen, uh, good for pollinators. And then over here we have a giant swath of uh, woodland sunflowers. And this is going to be covered with yellow flowers and mixed in is more milkweed um, a little bit of tuberosa common milkweed and echinacea down there and that is a rescued winter berry and on the fence right there that is pipe vine for pipe vine swallowtails so that is our front butterfly garden um, again been doing this since I was about seven and I haven't stopped so we hope uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, hope you subscribe to our to our uh, YouTube channel. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. <laughs> we only have about a thousand to go. <laughs> so that is our goal uh, to get there. Um, but uh, if you have a little bit of land or want to do something for nature, uh, this is putting in a butterfly garden is probably something you may want to look into it's kind of cool uh, especially if you get butterflies to start laying eggs you get to raise them and see how the whole life cycle uh, it replaces lost habitat because uh, everything is uh, being bulldozed down and every little bit helps we don't use any insecticide uh, so that's one of the main things with the butterfly garden you can't really use insecticide in the yard you kind of have to do everything manually. Yeah, like I said, I'm picking uh, beetles off of here. I've got some more I gotta take care of. Um, and as you plant, plant a mixture of a lot of native plants. Figure out, uh, there's plenty of uh, sites uh, you can Google to determine what butterfly species are in your area. And then you can figure out what native plants you have. Uh, marry the two up and uh, you'll attract and re uh, butterflies and again replace um, habitat that's been lost. Let me show you one other thing. The common milkweed is, uh, we get so much common milkweed, it comes up in the lawn. So as it comes up in the lawn, you can actually pull these up. Uh, so it's the stem just before the root and stick this in the ground 
and these all root really easily. So we spread this out and we've almost maxed out the property on milkweed. So what we do is we actually remove these, believe it or not, and we don't have much to do with it anymore, but they come back up. And what it does, it keeps fresh sprouts of common milkweed um, uh, in the yard. And this is really what the monarchs, when they finally arrive, if they arrive this year, uh, prefer. Right, girl? Uh, somebody was just in her pool. Now I have a dripping wet, smelly dog. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I wish I could show you some eggs, but again, we don't have any monarchs. Oh, uh, one last thing, spice bush. This is a spice bush, uh, a spice bush uh, tree. Uh, very common here. This large spice bush is one of about five I rescued about uh, 15 years ago from a construction site. This is right at our front door. Uh, you'll see in a few minutes what we found uh, walking, walking in from uh, taking the dog for a walk yesterday. Uh, but this is the food source for the spice bush swallowtail. And what you always look for, obviously, is something eating the leaves. But they can most be, they give themselves away by the protection they make by folding a leaf over. Um, so I will show you that here in just a second. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it was a kind of a long video, but I wanted to go over everything in the butterfly garden. There was no Kelly. She's out with a friend tonight. So I was bored and made another butterfly garden video. You can never have too many butterfly garden videos, right? Uh, okay, I hope to talk to you. I hope to see you soon. Sign up for our YouTube videos, our YouTube channel. We need more subscribers and more views. Like us and uh, I appreciate your, your visit. Okay, so uh, there's a spice bush plant growing right next to our front door and we noticed a curled leaf. A curled leaf, honey. Oh, cool. So would you like to do the honors? What am I doing? Am I open, holding it or opening the leaf? Opening the leaf. It's spider or a caterpillar? Caterpillar! <laughs> Look at the face! It's like an alien. <laughs> I am an alien. Okay, we have our first spice bush of the year. Now what do we do with it? He's not as colorful <laughs> as usual. Usually they have such a big green head no, with big he eyes. He hasn't changed yet. Do you see his eyes? Yeah, he hasn't changed yet. I can't yet. really see. Okay. okay, cover him back up. Yeah, then we'll, we'll save him. Do I pull this off? Not yet, not yet. Well, don't fling the... We're Why not yet? We're going to take this whole limb. So we All need right, to go get the it. scissors. Take it. You can't just pull it off. Yeah, but you gotta. You can't just. You gotta hold this. Yeah, I don't need hold scissors. It. Why'd oh. you say scissors? <laughs> Jeez, okay. Making everything so difficult. Okay, so our first one of the year. Where's it going? In the house. Yeah, but where? We don't on have the, any of the, on the bar. Ready. You gotta put it in a thing so it has stuff to eat. I will. I'll take care of it. Okay. Okay. Hit the little red button. Thank you.